Dr. Pramath Raj Sinha is an entrepreneur, institution builder, academic, executive and philanthropist. He was the founding dean of Indian School of Business, the Royal calls it ISB, and one of the founders of Harappa Education 9.9 .9 Group, Ashoka University, Vedika Scholars Program for Women, and Naropa Fellowship. Uh, he was formerly the CEO of Anand Bazar Patrika Group, a leading media company and a partner at McKinsey and Company. He was listed in 2013 by Thinkers 50 as one of India's top 50 management thinkers and in 2015 he was named the personality of the year by FIKI for his contribution to education. May I request you sir to please enlighten us with your address. Now we, are having, we will be forced to go back to the old way of education because 36 years ago my education did got, got me a job but a very different job from what I studied. So the point is, anyway, education is not getting you the job that you are being educated in. So education should be about you being able to learn whatever you need to learn. And the last point I'll make about learning is that we all now have to learn throughout our lives. Agar hum seekhte nahi rahenge, then you will just not be able to keep up with the times. In fact, all of us are sitting here. Uh, there are eminent educationists here, people from different fields. We are all learning all the time, otherwise we will not be relevant. Srimati Natasha Jog, when I met her last time, she was a TV anchor. Some of you may know that. Now she is talking about artificial intelligence and virtual reality and augmented reality and is working from one of the most foremost technology companies in the world. She has had to learn to be able to do this. If she, has not had to, if she had not learned, she would have always been a television journalist and not been able to come to this stage. So all of us have to constantly keep learning and therefore it's the love for learning that we have to inculcate in our children and in our young people. Without that, as a country, as a society, as a world, we are in deep trouble. I don't want to say this in a negative way, because people are doing this, our NEP addresses this, uh, so it's, it's very timely, but that's the deeper reason multidisciplinarity and interdisciplinarity is important. That is the reason why IIT and AIMS collaborating in Bhubaneswar is important. That is why bringing AI into medical technology again that Professor Karmalkar talked about is important. Very quickly, my second point was about access. The truth is, as Dr. Anand himself gave us the statistics, we have the largest number of young people in this world, yet only one in three, less than that, actually 30% is the GER, I think, these days, less than one in three gets to go to college or get higher education. This is a massive problem that we should all be worried about. Unless we also think about access, and how do we get more and more people to get education? We will be missing out on this dividend, this huge advantage that we have, which is that the median age is low. The median age is low, but that median age population also has to be skilled up, educated, taught how to learn, as I was talking about. So I think initiatives around making sure that education is accessible to everyone is very important. A lot of people criticize the university that I'm part of uh, at Ashoka University that it is very expensive. What most people don't know is that 20% of Ashoka students get a free education. Because we guarantee that if you get into Ashoka, the ability to pay will not get in the way of you getting a good education. So I think we have to somehow guarantee the, the, the education to people who are able to make it. We do it in the public sector, we do it in the government institutions, but in the private institutions, where this is a big problem. And the sad part is that in our country, 70% of all education is private, which is the highest in the world. M much more than anywhere in the world. And therefore, 
a lot of students are shut out from accessing that system because not all private universities are able to give generous scholarships. So this is a big conundrum that we have. I don't have a solution for it, but I may have a possible answer for it, which is my third point, which is the use of technology. The fact is that without online digital learning, we will not be able to get the GER up. The NEP ka policy hai of taking us to 50%, just think about it. That would mean doubling our entire education infrastructure, doubling the number of campuses, doubling the number of buildings, doubling the number of classrooms, doubling the number of professors, teachers, faculty. And the time frame that when, in which it needs to get done, it just will not be possible. So just as to open bank accounts, we now have a digital payment system which completely leapfrogged the, ability, the need to go to a bank branch and open a bank account and so on. I think somewhere the truth is that many, many young people in this country for higher education are only going to be able to get their education online. There is nothing wrong with that. I must tell you. Again, Natasha mentioned the importance of social learning uh, at, our, at our company, Harappa, where we actually teach uh, some of these, online, these skills online. We have found that you can actually bring elements of social learning even in the virtual environment. And even if it is not as good as physical learning, the truth is alternative kya hai? People are not even getting the physical learning. So at least they are getting something. And they are getting something which is reasonably high quality. So, there's an initiative now by the Ministry of Education to build a digital university. This is the new version of IGNU. IGNU was trying to do that in the offline, in-person world. If you wait and watch, India's digital university will become the very largest digital university in the world very quickly. Because it will provide quality education and it will provide quality education to everyone. And this is where the point I was making about affordability will come in because that education will also be inexpensive and high quality at the same time. Swayam has tried to do that. Some of you have seen that even now you can even get an IIT degree online. Bit Spilani has been providing degrees online for a long time. And those online degrees are actually not that expensive and they are very high quality. And lots and lots of students in India are now just going to that rather than going to a brick and mortar physical campus. So online and technology and digital learning are going to play a very important role. It will bring in the element of love for learning because now you can study what you want. You can study it whenever you want. So some of the classes that we are offering online at Ashoka, we have a 16-year-old in the class and a 72-year-old in the class. Same class with somebody who is 16 years old and in school with somebody who is 72 years old. So you can study whenever you want. You can study what you want. And you can study it in an affordable manner. And that is where some of all of this is going to come together. I think India as a country has the opportunity to innovate in education more than anywhere else in the world because our need is much greater. West ke log to already median age ke paar chale gaye, unka to time khatam ho gaya, but hamare jo young people hai, they have to uh, learn, learn quickly and learn in this new way and therefore a lot of education, entrepreneurship that is happening in this country will create the innovation and I am a firm believer in that. Again, I hope some of these ideas are helpful to some of the people in the audience, particularly the young people who have the biggest responsibility of taking these ideas forward. Again, thank you very much for inviting me here today, uh, and I wish you the very best for the rest of this conference. Thank you.